So Bob, I have to ask you about China. You have been a voice of reason, uh, urging the Chinese and the U.S. governments to engage in constructive dialogue. We're still in a trade war. What impact has it had? For a global company, we have a huge R&D and manufacturing presence here in the U.S. So winning in markets outside of the U.S., um, creating value for our customers and making money gives us more capacity to invest here in the U U.S. in R&D and fab. So we've all had to adjust and, and adapt in a variety of different ways. And I say that meaning um, we, have a, we, we play a large role in China. There's a big consumption market for us, both on the PC and on the server side. Um, we have a reasonably large manufacturing base, and we have a large uh, chunk of employees in our design centers in China. So it's a very important market for us and for our customers in many ways. So we've had to adjust and adapt our supply chain to uh, have flexibility to allow some of our OEMs to um, move their assembly so they don't have to deal with tariffs. We've had to stop, in some cases, um, as export control laws evolve and change, we've had to stop shipping to some customers. So our priorities and our focus are about uh, retaining market access, protecting our IP, and adjusting and adapting to the rules of the road. How serious is the risk that in response to the trade war, China could double down on the development of its own indigenous chip making capability. Is, is that, I know they're nowhere close right now, but over the longer term, is that a, a threat to Intel? I look at it in a slightly different way. Whether it's a hyperscale with incredible capabilities, um, whether it's uh, venture capital going into semi, um, um, whether it's uh, China building their own capabilities, for, for us, it all leads back to the rate and pace of innovation um, to continue to defy the odds and do things that nobody else can do, such that when they have to make these decisions, um, Intel and the role that we play in the world is near the top of their list. But that presumes they're, they're thinking rationally, and they may be, but another sort of irrational aspect is going to enter into their thinking, which is kind of national security and national independence. So is it more realistic that China develops a chip capability because of all of, all of these global tensions? You know, in so many ways, we have to focus on things that we can control. But, you know, we also focus on things that we can control and influence. And along the way, I still come back to the same answer. Um, pace of innovation to deliver things that nobody else can do is the best path um, to continue to trajectory for the company. Speaking then of things you can control, have you moved any production out of China? I know you have, I think, some memory chip production in, in China. So we have a very uh, global footprint in the U.S., um, predominantly Israel, um, uh, Ireland, that's our fabs, in, uh, in a fab in uh, Dalian, which is our memory fab. And then we have assembly and tests in Malaysia and Vietnam and China. So we have a very global footprint, so we have the flexibility to adjust and adapt to where we make things uh, um, around the world. So, um, so far, we, you know, we have diversity in our footprint. It's, uh, we call it a virtual, virtual factory. So we always have the ability to move things around to optimize, uh, create opportunities, and manage risk.